A good Monday morning to you. It's Pastor Greg Cheslick from 4th Avenue United Methodist Church. As we begin this new week, there are a lot of themes that are running through my mind. The first of which is the Martin Luther King observance of his birthday, which is today. In fact, I'm dressed up here because I'm going to be participating in offering prayer at a local event. It's also the week when we will inaugurate a new president. And as we do that, there's a lot of um, angst in the air. There's a lot of conflict within the American populace around uh, the election and the inauguration and some concerns about going forward. This is also a, a week marked aside for the prayer for Christian unity. So that, se that theme of unity seems to be uh, the powerful theme that is uh, flowing through all of these events. For our inspiration this morning, I hope you've got your cup of coffee, and I'm going to be reading from Mark's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 18 through 22. The disciples of John and of the Pharisees were accustomed to fast. People came to Jesus and objected. Why do the disciples of John and the disciples of the Pharisees fast? But your disciples do not fast. Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunken cloth on an old cloak. If he does, its fullness pulls away the new from the old, and the tear gets worse. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the skins are ruined. Rather, new wine is poured into fresh wineskins. New wine is poured into fresh wineskins. As I mentioned to you a few moments ago, today marks the beginning of an annual week for the prayer for Christian unity. And today's gospel reading certainly is appropriate. Jesus, wanting to show the people that he was doing something new and exciting, even though it didn't fit with many of his fellow Jews were expecting. Surely many people wondered who this upstart was, that is Jesus, and why he wanted to upset the status quo. But Jesus simply continued to preach the good news, heal the sick, and delivered the oppressed. And he's still doing that. He's still preaching good news. He's still healing people. He's he still de delivering the oppressed. Jesus wasn't purposely trying to upset anyone by breaking the practices of rigorous fasting that was common among the devoted Jews. No, he was demonstrating what life should be like now that the bridegroom, that is he, had come and ushered in the kingdom of God. Surely it seemed risky not to rely on so much on practices like fasting. Many people preferred to stick with the safe way of doing things that they had learned from their ancestors. Better that they take a chance, better that, than that, take a chance on an uncharted path in the hopes of deeper faith and greater intimacy with God. In a similar way, God has been doing something new in the body of Christ. He has been drawing together divided churches and helping them to overcome painful, centuries-old prejudices. Catholics and Lutherans and Methodists have come to agreement on the term justification by faith. Orthodox Christians and Catholics are talking together about the role of the Pope. Even Catholics and Evangelicals are putting aside their suspicions and working together to promote a culture of life. So much is changing, and God is inviting us to embrace these changes as part of his unifying plan. 
As Christians, we may still disagree on doctrines like the role of the Pope, the meaning of Holy Communion, and the role of the Virgin Mary. But we all agree on so many more things, like a loving Trinitarian God, salvation through faith in Jesus Christ by grace, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the call to conversion and baptism, and the promise of eternal life in heaven. Instead of emphasizing what divides us, let's focus on what we have in common. Let's build one another up. Let's work together where we can to announce the good news, to heal the sick, to reach new people for Christ, and together join forces to heal a broken world. All this week, as people from different churches pray together, and as our nation comes together for the inauguration and the beginning of a new presidency, let's ask the Lord to soften our hearts and open us up to this new path of greater unity in the church, in our communities, and yes, our nation and our world. Let's pray. God, we find so much division in this world, division in families, divisions in churches, divisions in the Christian community, and certainly divisions in this nation and in this world. As far as it depends upon us, Lord, help us to focus on what we have in common with our neighbors, to major on the major things, to be charitable in all of our dealings, to seek to, to understand before being asked to be understood, to join you in building a more unified world, a world that you loved so much, that you gave your son Jesus Christ to suffer and die so that none may perish, but all who believe might know eternal life. Watch over us this day and help us, O oh Lord, to be your instruments to bring peace in this broken world. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people say, Amen. Have a great day. Be disciples. Work for unity.